been like three days since I washed my hair. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. All Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on For Real Now. <laughs> Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. And I say that because this is the first week that I've had sales on all three platforms. So I'm so excited. I actually had sales on all three platforms in the same day. So I really feel like I've made it when I say that I sell on all those different platforms. I have a sale per platform to prove for it. And they all happen on the same day. So that was really, really, really exciting. I am a part-time reseller, although I have been saying that I'm a full-time reseller for the summer because I am a high school choir teacher and I don't teach during the summer. So it's been really nice to devote a lot more time and energy into my reselling business. Now this past week I was really busy because my parents were in town from Seattle and they were in town because my brother and sister-in-law had a daughter not too long ago, maybe like a couple weeks ago, so they're here to see her. And they were also here because my daughter's sixth birthday was last week and so they were here to help us celebrate for that and she had her party yesterday. So it's been really busy around here but like a really good kind of busy. Not only that, but yesterday, was it yesterday? Two days ago. Two days ago I got to go to the bins in Indianapolis and I got to meet Michelle and G from the bin pickers if you don't know who they are I'm gonna link their channel down below you probably already do know who they are because they are honestly kind of like staples in the reselling community they are amazing and they're honestly just as sweet and charming as they are in their videos in person like they were amazing G was very like focused and he was like there to pick so we didn't get to talk as much but Michelle and I got to just kind of hang around and shoot the breeze for a little bit and it was so much fun because you don't really get to like meet with other resellers in person and just kind of talk about what it's like to resell and what things are doing well for you and what things aren't and it was just really fun like I would find stuff that maybe would sell better for them and she would find stuff that would sell better for me so we would kind of exchange a little bit here and there and so it was just Honestly, so much fun and so amazing to finally meet them in person. Now the bins themselves were not amazing. <laughs> Michelle like kept apologizing as if it were her fault and I was like, no, it's it's not your fault. We still got some stuff. I'll do a haul video later this week and I'll include some footage from that trip. Also, I know that there are some people here on YouTube as well as on my Instagram and amongst my Poshmark followers who want to go to the bins with me in Indianapolis. So I promise like, I'm trying to actually organize a trip to the bins sometime probably early August definitely before school starts for me. If you are interested in going to the bins in Indianapolis with me sometime, let, shoot me a comment down below so that I can make sure to tag you when it happens. And like I said, I'm gonna try to go in early August. And I think that that would be so much fun to just get like a group of people together, go to the bins together, and then maybe like get lunch or something like that. That would be a dream come true. So again, if you're in the Indianapolis area, just leave maybe your Poshmark closet, or if you're on Instagram, leave your Instagram handle down below in the comment section so that I can tag you when that happens and we will make a day of it. Also just a reminder that I am hosting a passion sip in Urbana which is like central Illinois around the U of I. I'm hosting that on July 20th so if you live around me or you're within you know driving distance to that passion sip I'd love to see you there. Again just leave a comment down below with maybe your Instagram handle or your Poshmark closet and I will make sure to tag you with more details when I have them. Phew. Okay, so now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what's sold. This week, like I said, I'm going to be able to share with you Poshmark sales as well as eBay and Mercari sales too. So let's get into it. So I think the reason why I've finally been making sales on Mercari and on eBay is because I think I talked about this in my last video too, but I joined a British Poshers accountability group on Instagram and we're supposed to commit to doing something every day for the month of July and then we're supposed to put in our Instagram stories every day just whether or not we were able to accomplish it. Now I've honestly been kind of bad about that piece of it. I haven't been posting it to my Instagram because I've either been forgetting or I've just been like too tired at the end of the night to do that but I have been consistently listing an average of five items a day on Poshmark and then cross posting them to eBay and to Mercari. And I say an average of five because some nights I honestly pass out while I'm listing like the third or the fourth item and who knows what those listings even look like. They're probably so grammatically incorrect or like 
I don't know. I'm sure that there are a lot of mistakes in those listings, but I have been listing on average about five. So if I only get like three listings one day, I'll make sure to do eight the next day. And so I've been pretty good about listing consistently on all three platforms. And I think that's why I've been making sales in all three. Now they're not like amazing sales, especially over on eBay. Like you'll see these sales are not anything amazing, but I'm just trying to get my foot in the door. I'm trying to figure out this shipping thing nice and slow so that I don't make any mistakes so that I don't get any dings on my account. I don't have a store yet on eBay I just am using like the free I think it's 50 listings that you get at the beginning I know some people were commenting on my Instagram and asking me how I'm doing it on eBay in terms of when you first start you only get 10 listings and then they kind of cap you because they want to make sure that you're gonna do a good job but I think because I've had an eBay store open for or not store but I've had an eBay account open for a decent amount of time I just haven't really been active on it and like the couple sales that I have made in like the half year that I've had my eBay account open, I've done a good job of shipping the stuff out and whatnot. I have like an above average rating as an eBay seller, so maybe that's why I'm able to have, again, I think the cap is 50 listings, so I don't know. If you're in that boat where you're like just starting and you're wondering, how come I can't list more? That's probably why you just have to sell through a couple things and get things shipped out properly, and then eBay will start to trust you and let you list more. So anyway, with all that being said, let's get into what's sold. So last Monday, which is July 1st, I sold one thing on Poshmark and it was an extremely old listing of mine. It was this pair of leggings with like a mesh panel by 90 degree by Reflex. I have no idea where that brand is from. I don't know who sells it, who carries it. I picked that up last year sometime, I think at the Salvation Army in my town. I'm not 100% sure. Um, they weren't like the most amazing thing in the world, but I was just like really on the lookout for workout attire because people were saying that workout clothes really sells quickly for them. So I thought that they were kind of cute and I picked them up and they are, they're pretty cute, but I don't know that this is a super desirable brand. So um, they're in a size small. Someone sent me an offer for $10 and I took it because I've had these in my closet forever. So I made $7.05 on that sale. Now that same day, I listed a few things over to Mercari. And I believe the same day that I listed these, like within 20, 30 minutes of listing these, they sold. Now I have some theories as to why this item sold and I have learned from it and I will not be making the same mistake again but on July 1st over on Mercari I sold this pair of Old Navy linen blend kind of like cargo shorts not kind of like they're cargo shorts like I don't know why is it kind of they were given to me for free by my friend at church and actually like their family gave me a lot of stuff because I gave their daughter voice lessons for her role as Jasmine in her school musical Aladdin and so they in exchange gave me like bags and bags of clothes and I really hadn't gotten to it until just like very recently. I would given most of their stuff to my student who is photographing and steaming clothes for me and I got those pictures back and started listing them and a lot of his pieces, the husband's pieces especially, have been selling really really quick. So I listed these shorts for I want to say $15. I put free shipping on those shorts and I put it as the buyer will take care of shipping. Like on Mercari, you can use their shipping thing, like they have shipping stuff set up through USPS and FedEx so you can say you'll ship through one of them, but it's really expensive. Like I think that if you're shipping something between one and three pounds, it's like $11 if you're using USPS. And then to ship something from like three to five pounds is like $16. And if you think about it, like who wants to pay $11 for shipping for a pair of Old Navy cargo shorts, you know what I mean? So it's honestly kind of ridiculous. They do have an option where you can find your own method of shipping and it's like you just select the seller will figure out shipping. That's not what it's called, but I'll, I'll put a picture of what it looks like here. But you can choose the option to figure out shipping on your own. And that's what I did, but I did that not realizing that these shorts were so heavy. Like men's cargo shorts are not lightweight. They're at least a pound, but they're like definitely like a pound and a half or something like that. So when it came to figuring out shipping, it definitely came out to be much more than I expected it to be. And it ate into my profit quite a bit. So someone sent me an offer for these shorts for $12. She was buying them for her husband, which was really cute. And so I went on pirateship.com and I figured out shipping for these shorts. The cheapest way to send it was through a flat rate padded envelope. I think. I'm probably wrong. And if you know that I could have done something that would have been cheaper, please let me know. It was though like 
a pound and a half. I don't even remember off the top of my head. So I think that the cheapest route to do it was through the the USPS padded flat rate envelope. So that cost seven dollars and fifty five cents through pirate ship. So I mean, it's better than the eleven dollars that Mercari wanted to charge me. After the seven fifty five for shipping and after the ten um, percent cut that Mercari takes. I made $3.25 on those shorts. That's not a lot. And so I learned now that I cannot offer free shipping on Mercari for things that are heavier, or I have to really be thoughtful of how much I'm gonna accept when it comes to offers and make sure that it's worth my time. Now, honestly, I don't mind the $3.25 as being my profit because they were given to me for free. They're from Old Navy. I wasn't expecting this huge return on them anyway, but that's just something to be really mindful of when you are selling on platforms like Mercari and eBay and you're gonna take care of shipping. You just wanna be really thoughtful of how much the item weighs and how much you're gonna actually have to pay for shipping and how much it's going to eat into your profit. So the moral of the story is, don't be like me. <laughs> I was just so excited to get a sale on Mercari because I just don't make a lot of sales over there. So I was, you know, not being wise when it came to accepting offers and thinking through like what I was gonna make on the item, but that's okay, lesson learned. So moving on to Tuesday, July 2nd, I sold a couple of things over on Poshmark. The first was this t-shirt that my brother's friend <laughs> gave me. It is so ridiculous and I was like kind of scared that people were going to get really upset with me that I posted this, but I, I didn't even care. I thought it was really funny and if you don't find it funny, I'm sorry, but I don't know. So it's this t-shirt from McDonald's. It's not actually from McDonald's, but someone made it using the McDonald's logo and it just says I am, am using like the McDonald's M logo, fat. It's kind of whatever, but it was a size small. Someone offered me $8 for it. I made $5.05 and I was okay with that sale. I just, like I said, I thought it was funny. It did not get a lot of likes or anything. I've had it up for, you know, a few months. And so when someone offered me $8, I was happy to let it go. Next up on the second, I sold this pair of really cute and teeny tiny Keens. They were pink and they had like the rubber sole. They were like a hiking sandal in a size five for a little boy or girl. My son loves pink, so I'm not gonna say little girl because who knows, but I got these at a garage sale and I will link the, link it here? This one, this corner, I think I'm figuring it out guys. I think it's gonna link here. But I got these at a garage sale for 50 cents. I went on a Thursday, I remember, and they had a, not a ton, but they had some really good Keens and other things that actually sold in this week. And I'll show you what those things are here in a little bit. But I got them for 50 cents. So I had them listed for maybe like $18. Someone sent me an offer of 15, which I accepted. And so I made $12. And actually, I might be making that up. I actually think that they may have been, that may have been an outright sale. I think I had them listed for 15. So someone just bought them outright and I made $12 on those Keens. My lips are really chapped. I'm like, whatever, I'll deal with that later. So the next day, which was July 3rd on Wednesday, I sold one thing on Poshmark and that was this pair of Theory khaki light front shorts in a size 31 for men. I believe that this was just bought outright for $25, so I made $20 on them. My husband found them, I believe when we went to Goodwill um, in my last, was it my last thrift haul? I think it was my last thrift haul. I will link it here. And there are other things from that thrift haul that sold in this week as well. So that's really exciting. My husband was like a little apprehensive about these shorts just because they did have like a little watermark on them. And they also were like kind of an interesting color. That I, I described them as light khaki, but they kind of had this like pinkish twinge to them. And I definitely made sure to disclose that in the listing as well. It almost looked like maybe they had been put in the wash with something that was, you know, pink or red or something. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell unless you're really staring at it, but I, you know, we were kind of apprehensive about whether or not they would sell, but they did at full asking price, which is always super exciting. Or maybe I had them listed for 28 and he offered me 25. I don't really remember these things, especially when they are from the beginning of the week and especially when I've had the week that I've had in terms of just so much going on. But regardless, $25 was the offer. I made $20. So also on the third, I had the best day on Mercari that I've probably had ever. Like I don't think I've ever sold three things on Mercari in the same day. So the first thing that sold was another one of my friend Steve's shirts and it was this Banana Republic long sleeve gray shirt. It had like a crew neck 
and it was a size medium. Someone sent me an offer of $12. Now this one I had listed as the buyer paying shipping, so I didn't have to deal with that. So I just made a cool $10.80 after Mercari's 10% cut. The next thing that sold on July 3rd was actually another pair of Old Navy cargo shorts. And this time they were 100% cotton. The last pair was like a linen blend and these were a size 32. And they actually sold to the same person who bought the first pair of Old Navy shorts because again, she was just kind of like on the hunt for shorts for her husband. And she sent me an offer again of $12, which I accepted. And I had to do the same thing with shipping. And I already knew that going in, but I was fine with it because I'd already done it for her once before. And I was just happy to have like a repeat buyer. So I made $3.25 on those shorts as well. Pure profit because again, that was from Steve. And then the last thing that sold on Mercari was not from my friend Steve, but it's one of my boutique items. And I did cross post them over to Mercari when I first got them in a few months ago, and they've actually been pr selling pretty well over there. So if you have boutique items on Poshmark, I definitely consider cross-posting them over to Mercari, because I think especially for these kimonos, they've done better on Mercari, I think, than they have on Poshmark. And some of my boutique bags also have done really well over on Mercari, so I would definitely cross-list those. Anyways, um, someone sent me an offer on this kimono. It's like got this really pretty floral print on it and they sent me an offer of $29. So I figured out shipping for this using Pirate Ship again. By the way, I am thinking of making a video on how to utilize Pirate Ship. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. But shipping this out using Pirate Ship was much cheaper because it's so much lighter. It's just like a really thin kimono. So shipping only came out to $3.88. I don't remember why. I think it's because I was using a poly mailer and it was just so lightweight, like under eight ounces. So it came out to $3.88. So after taking that out of the equation, as well as Macari's 10% cut, I made $22.22 .22 on that kimono, which I was super happy with. Now, also on July 3rd, I made an eBay sale. So July 3rd was the day that I made a sale on every single platform, and it was really, really cool. I really felt like super legit in that moment. It also happened to be my daughter's birthday, so maybe she was like my good luck charm. I just need every day to be her birthday, I guess. So on July 3rd on eBay, I sold this lot of three Banana Republic 100% Pima Cotton V-neck white t-shirts. Ooh, that's a mouthful. So again, my friend Steve gave me these, and there just happened to be three of the same shirt. It's kind of maybe like more of an undershirt type thing. I lotted them up. I priced them at $17.99, and someone just bought them outright. Now I did list them at $17.99 with free shipping and they were definitely heavy because it was three shirts. So again, I went with the padded flat rate envelope. If you feel like there was a cheaper way to go about it, please let me know. And I just did it through eBay since on eBay it was also $7.55 and that's what Pirate Ship was gonna charge me too. Now also, I don't really understand eBay fees. If anyone really can explain eBay fees to me, please, please explain them in the comment section down below. I just like, for the sake of being able to tell you how much I made in this video, I just took 20% off of my profit from each eBay sale because I know that there's like eBay fees and then there's PayPal fees. So I don't know how much they actually take from my profit, but I'm just going to say it's 20%. So with 20% off of $17.99 and $7.55 taken off of that, I actually only ended up making $6.84 on those three shirts. Am I mad about it? No, because they sold super fast. Honestly, all of the stuff from my friend Steve that sold last week literally sold within a week of me listing it. Most things within a matter of like one or two days. So I wasn't mad about it and I was just happy to find new homes for these pieces, get them out of my house and be on my merry way. So $6.84, I'm, I'm totally fine with that because the other option was for them to hang out at Goodwill and you know, I feel really good about the fact that these things found a new home. So on the 4th of July, by the way, happy Independence Day. But on the 4th of July, which is a Thursday, I sold two things on Poshmark. That was it. The first thing was this Tommy Bahama blue and turquoise maxi dress. It was in a size small. I picked this up at Goodwill. I don't remember... I don't think I hauled this, but I got it really recently and I haven't had it up for very long. It's been probably two weeks, three weeks, and I had it listed for maybe like $34, I want to say. Someone sent me an offer of $30, which was 
awesome. Like I wish people would send reasonable offers like that all the time. So I definitely accepted that and I made $24 on that dress. Tommy Bahama has been so hit or miss for me. Usually I just don't have very good luck with it, but I figured it was a maxi dress and it was like in great condition. So I just wanted to give it a try and I'm glad that I did because I may have paid like $6 for it and you know, getting $24 out of six, I'm totally okay with that. Next up on the fourth, I sold another pair of these new without tags, Cintas, is that how you say that? Cintas Comfort Flex Work Pants. And they were in this navy color. A friend of mine gave me like three or four pairs of these, identical pairs of these, like half a year ago. And I sold one, a few what sold videos ago. And this is, I think the second pair to sell. I don't remember if I have them listed at $25. I think I do. So I think that's, maybe I have them listed at 28 or maybe I have them listed at 32. I could always check, but I don't really feel like it right now. But I think that, I think I have them listed for like 32. Someone sent me an offer of 25. Yes. Like that's awesome. I made $20 on those pair of pants. On July 5th, I made one sale and it was this pair of men's American Eagle distressed slim straight Distressed jeans. Did I say distress? I already said distress. And they were in a size 29. I had them listed at something. 25, I want to say. Someone sent me an offer for 22. That was awesome. So I took home $17.60. I know I've said this before, but I will say it again. I really enjoy selling American Eagle denim. A lot of people are really loyal to it. And I think it does appeal more to like a younger demographic, even though I have like, I'm in my 30s and I wear American Eagle denim still. And I don't like go out looking for it. I don't think I've like gone inside of an American Eagle in a very long time. But when I have found it at the thrift store and it's in my size, I will keep it. Um, I have this pair of American Eagle shorts that I did go to American Eagle for, but it was like six years ago or something and I still wear them. So, you know, American Eagle, people do like it, especially younger people. And Poshmark does kind of appeal to a younger crowd. So it makes sense to me to carry American Eagle and it moves pretty well for me. I don't know what your experience is like with American Eagle. Let me know in the comment section down below, but personally, I really like it. So I'm always on the lookout for it, even in smaller sizes, because small people need clothes too, just like big people need clothes. People in the middle need, whatever, yeah. By the way, <laughs> something, something that I thought was really funny. My brother, he is, I have two brothers and the brother right below me, he is pretty just like a no frills kind of guy. Like he's just all about like being practical. And it's not that he's like frugal per se, but he just doesn't care to like have really nice things. He doesn't know like what the top brand names are. Like actually for my birthday one year, when I was in my 20s, like early 20s, I had told him that I wanted a gift card to Urban Outfitters. And I live in a town called Champaign and it's right next to a town called Urbana. And so he was like, I got you that Urbana Outfitters gift card you wanted. And I was like, no, no, it's not called Urbana Outfitters. It's not specific to our town. It's like this huge store this huge chain that is nationwide. Like, what are you talking about Urbana Outfitters? Like, that's how much he knows about fashion. So he recently told me, because he knows that I, you know, do this, I resell and I go thrifting and all that kind of stuff. So he was like, hey, when you're at the thrift store, if you see stuff that's in my size, can you pick it up for me and I'll pay you back? And I was like, okay, like, what sizes are you looking for? And he's like, well, in, a p <laughs> in pants, I'm like a 40-40. I'm gonna put a picture of him here. <laughs> he's not a 40-40. 4040 is like Shaquille O'Neal. Like I was like, you don't wear a 4040. And he's like, oh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm like a 3030. I'm like, John, that's like a huge difference between 4040 and 3030. Like, figure it out. And he's like, I'll ask my wife. Like, he he's so clueless. Sorry, that was like so off tangent. And I don't even know how we got there, but we did. And I'm not sorry about it. So anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, earlier in the week, like honestly, Monday through Friday, I wasn't selling very many things per day and I wasn't selling a lot of things for top dollar, as you can see, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were really good. So no, not Friday, but Saturday and Sunday were really good. So Saturday, the sixth, the first thing that I sold, okay, this was not super impressive, but I sold this one button up shirt from Top Man and it was just this gray 100% cotton shirt in a size medium. I picked this up somewhere. Maybe my husband found it. I don't know. I had it listed for 18. Someone sent me an offer of 10. I took it because I've had it listed for a while. So I took home $7.05. The next thing that sold on Poshmark, I've had forever. I think we actually picked this up, my husband and I, when we went to the Indianapolis Goodwill outlet 
last year. Like that was the first time that we went. We made a day of it. We spent a few hours there and my husband found these, I think, and they were just these track pants from the brand Champion. And they look to be pretty old. Like if you look at the tag, it looks like they're a really old pair of Champion track pants, but they're really cool. Like they had like stripes up the side. If I remember correctly, they like buttoned up the side too. They were just super wrinkly. And so it was kind of hard to get good pictures of them. But I have them in my four for $25 sale that I talk about in this video right here. And it didn't sell as part of like the sale. Someone just bought the item outright actually at the price that I had it listed at. I had dropped the price all the way down to $10. So someone bought it at 10 and I took home $7.05. Okay, so this is where it started to get good. So at the same garage sale that I picked up those tiny Keens, those really cute Keens, I also picked up this vintage Gunny Sacks like outfit. It was a vest with a skirt. I think it's a calico print. And you could tell it was vintage. And actually the person at the garage sale was like, this is from the 80s and you know it's been passed down in my family and whatnot. So it was in a children's girls size nine and it, it was just really cute. And for it being so old, it was in really good condition. It did have some like fading and wear on one of the shoulders, which I disclosed, but otherwise it was in great condition. It was my first time picking up gunny sacks. I know that a lot of people talk about it over on Instagram which by the way, if you're not following me yet, my Instagram handle is at Becky Park on Poshmark. So make sure that you check me out because you can definitely see kind of more like behind the scenes footage of my life over there. But I've seen a lot over on Instagram of people sharing about how this is a great bolo, which seems for be on the lookout. So I was really excited when I found it. I think I had it listed for $50 or maybe it was like $45. And it did get a lot of likes, but I didn't have any offers on it. I was consistently sending out offers to likers. But someone finally sent me an offer of $35, which I was really happy to accept, and I made $28 on that outfit. So the next thing that sold on Saturday was actually from my Thread Up Shoe Rescue haul. So if you want to see that, I will link that right here. I was just really lucky and I got a great box from Thread Up. And a lot of people who left comments on that video were like, I have gotten rescue boxes before and they were not nearly as good as yours. So I know that I got really, 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 really lucky. And one of the shoes that they sent me in that box was this pair of, I, I still don't know how to say it, Veja? Veja? I think it's Veja, but Veja leather lace-up shoes in this brown color. When I did the unboxing, I had no idea what this brand was. I could tell that they were like a good quality shoe, and so a lot of people very kindly left comments in the comment section of that video saying, this is a great brand, it's a sustainable brand, and they've done collaborations with Madewell, and I can't remember who else. And someone else said that Meghan Markle wears them and has made them really popular because of her influence. I was really happy to see that they were a desirable pair of shoes. So they were in a size six. I think I listed them pretty high, maybe at like 54 or something like that. And someone sent me an offer of $40, which I thought was really reasonable, especially because there was a little bit of wear on the shoes. So after Poshmark's fees, I took home $32. The last thing that sold on Poshmark on the sixth was this bundle and it was my only bundle of the week and the person actually bundled the two items together and then sent me a fairly reasonable offer so that doesn't happen to me very rarely. I feel like people will like items and I will create bundles for them or people will like items or people will create bundles and just kind of wait for me to send them an offer so this was really exciting that you know she kind of did all the work sent me the offer and all I had to do was press accept. But the first thing in this bundle was this pair of page Bridget High Rise Boyfriend Ankle Jeans. I think I got these really recently. I just don't remember where. I'm pretty sure I just got them at like Goodwill in one of my last thrifting trips. I feel like I've just been going so recently that I can't even keep track anymore. But I definitely haven't had them for very long. And one of the reasons why I was excited to pick them up, even though Paige... You know, it, it's so hit or miss for me. I, I have been selling them pretty consistently though, and like over $25. But um, I picked them up because they were a size 30. And so, you know, I'm always on the lookout for all sizes. And I feel like I have so much of like the smaller sizes in my Poshmark closet. So when I find anything that's like 30 or 31 or especially plus size, I get really excited because I know that there's definitely somewhat of a deficit of those sizes in my Poshmark closet. So I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional of going after larger sizes for my Poshmark closet. So that was the first pair of jeans. The second pair of pants that sold in this bundle were the Adriano Goldschmied The Willow pants and they were in this black corduroy. I picked them up at this consignment boutique that had a fill-a-bag sale. I'll link that here. 
I was just so excited to find Adriana Goldschmidt. I don't find that very often in my area at all. And I had heard that they were awesome and they were a great brand and people paid a lot for them, but not really in the corduroy. Like corduroy is not super in or super desirable. So the person sent me an offer of $58. I think like the asking price on the entire bundle was like $78 or something like that. But I was okay with taking $58, especially because I think that it would have taken those Adriana Goldschmidt's a while to sell if I hadn't just accepted this bundle and I thought it was a fair price for both of those pair of pants I mean that's that's pretty fair so I took home forty six dollars and forty cents now also on the sixth I had a pretty good sale over on Mercari and that was for this coach metallic ocelot is that how you say it ocelot Audrey purse it had this animal print on it this is one of the purses that was in like the coach purse lot from my coworker that I've talked about before I bought like 13 bags off of my coworker plus a Michael Kors dress all of the bags were coach except for this one nine West bag and I bought all of that off of her for $200 now I still haven't made my $200 back I've had these bags listed and that dress listed now for a while and what I'm learning is that Coach just doesn't do as well anymore, especially if it's like the newer stuff. I think vintage Coach, especially just like the solid leather bags, like the crossbody ones and, you know, the ones with like the turn lock and stuff, I think those can do really, really well. But the newer styles are just kind of like, meh, especially because a lot of that stuff you can just pick up at the outlet for pretty cheap to begin with. So I don't know, but this one did finally sell after getting like a gazillion <laughs> likes on Poshmark and a good number of likes over on Mercari as well, but I finally sold them for $44. Someone sent me an offer and I was very happy to accept it. I was kind of scared at first because there was a payment error and I was like, oh great, like I'm never going to get rid of this skirt, but she fixed it and she was able to get it for $44. So I made $39.60 on that purse and I did not make the mistake of saying that I would pay for shipping on this one. This was like listed a long time ago and at that point I was not doing free shipping on anything over on Mercari so the buyer is paying shipping on this so I did make a nice $39.60 on that sale. And that finally brings us to today, which is Sunday the 7th, and today was a pretty good day too. So the first thing that sold over on Poshmark was this pair of loft gray chino shorts in a size 4. I've had these since last summer, so when someone sent me an offer of $10, I was like, take them, take them and go. Take other things if you want to. She did not, but that's okay. $7.05 is what I took home from that sale. Next up, I sold this Disney Parks Dumbo The Ladies Think I'm Fly t-shirt in a size large. I just picked this up with my friend and I linked that already. Um, it was like my last Goodwill thrift haul. I found like three Disney shirts that day, all in the same size, all from Disneyland. I'd heard that Disney stuff does really well. Now, I don't have those cross-posted to eBay. I should probably do that because I think that's probably where it would do the best but I have them all over on Poshmark. And I did list them pretty high just because I wanted to see what happened. I know that some people find Disney stuff really desirable. So this one I had priced at $34. The person sent me an offer of $10. And if you know me, you know that I do not ever decline an offer, even if I find it pretty offensive. And $10, I was like, okay. So I think I countered with something like $28. And she came up to $15. And so I countered back with 24 and she countered with 16 and then I countered at 20 and once I countered at 20 I was like that's it like that's where I'm gonna stay and I mean I think that 20 was pretty reasonable for that shirt I don't know that the comps on that shirt were like that high to begin with but I was like I want to stay at 20 especially because I started at 34 but thankfully she didn't try to counter back and she just accepted the 20 which I was happy about so I made $16 on that shirt I know a lot of people ask about countering and if it's worth it because a lot of people feel like when they do counter, they just end up losing the sale. And if I'm being honest, I lose the sale a lot doing that too. And so if it's even remotely reasonable and especially if I've had it for a while, chances are I'm going to take the money and run. Like I'm going to sprint as fast as I can and put that money in my bank. But sometimes it is worth countering, especially if you know that someone else will come along and pay a better price for that item, even if you have to wait a little bit longer. So it's just one of those things like you get better at it the longer you do this. And by no means am I a pro. I shared in a what sold video and I don't remember which one, but I had like this bathing suit that someone had offered me a decent price on and I had countered with her and I lost the sale. And 
to this day that swimsuit is sitting in my Poshmark closet. So sometimes we do dumb things when it comes to countering or you know whatnot. But if you know the value of your item and you know that someone's offer is not there, don't accept, it's okay. Someone will come along to pick it up later. So don't lose sleep over the fact that you lost a sale, especially if it was because it was a crappy offer to begin with. Definitely use that counter button. Definitely make sure that you get your money's worth. But don't be crazy about it. Like I know that this shirt, I knew that I probably wasn't gonna sell this shirt for $34. I just wanted to start it there and see what happened. So, you know, I was being reasonable in coming down to 20. And I think that that's part of the reason why I made this sale. I think if I'd stayed at like 28 or something, I wasn't gonna make it. And that would have probably been a dumb move to make to try and stay at 28 and insist that I get that much because maybe I wouldn't be able to get that much, right? So I'm happy with the $20 sale. I'm happy with the $16 that I made on it and we can move on. I was so happy about this next sale. So in that same haul that I picked up the Dumbo shirt, I believe I picked up this dress and it was at the Goodwill when like the dresses were jam packed. And as soon as I started like taking stuff off of the rack where all the dresses were and just like kind of making it easier to sift through the dresses. I found so many great dresses, including this one. And it's this Market and Spruce linen dress. It's called the Chrissy dress, and it had like really pretty scallop details on it. The back had a cutout, it was spaghetti strap. I listed it for 40, and someone bought it outright for $40. So I'm super happy about that. I made $32, and it really hasn't been listed for very long, probably less than a month. And then the last thing that sold on Poshmark today was this pair of Anthropology Cartonnier, 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 <laughs> I don't know how you say that, Cartonnier, whatever, you know what I mean. And it was these red and purple print shorts. They did have some like wash fade on it, so I definitely made sure to, you know, put that in the listing. I had them listed at 25, someone sent me an offer for 17. I've had them listed for a few months now, so I took it and I made $13.60 on that sale. I don't usually find a lot of anthropology in the thrift stores in my area, but on this day that I went to Goodwill, I found this pair of anthropology shorts as well as another pair of anthropology, I think they were also Cartonnier shorts, like in the same size. Those already sold in my 50% off sale, but yeah, I mean, it's really fun to find shorts by anthropology because they usually have like really fun prints and they're just, they just kind of make you smile, you know? So I didn't get as much as, you know, maybe I wanted for them, but there was just, like I said, some like fading to them and I've had them for a while. So I was happy to let them go at 17. And the last sale that we will talk about is on eBay. And the, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing on eBay. Like I really, really don't. Like any tips you have for me on eBay, please leave them in the comment section down below. I actually had an Instagram post to where I was just like, help me, like help me do eBay right. And so many people left wonderful comments and people were like, if you need any help, let me know. And it, I, I mean, this reselling community is so amazing. Like I'm so thankful to be a part of it because there are so many amazing people who just really want you to succeed. Like it's, it's crazy how much free information is out there and how much people are willing to help you if you just ask for it. So I learned so much just even from that one post that I posted on my Instagram, just asking for help on eBay and people came through in ways that were just so generous and so kind, but I still don't feel like I know what I'm doing. So I've just kind of, I've just been like playing around with a lot of different features that eBay has. Like I have some stuff on eBay where I'm like, okay, I list it and I say that the buyer has to pay for all of shipping. And then I have some stuff where I list it and I say that I'll pay for this much of shipping. And then I have some stuff where I list it and I say I'll do free shipping. And then I also have some auctions that I have going. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying all of the things just to like figure things out slowly and just to kind of like see how things work. So like I said, I've been listing you know, an average of five things every day to Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And so I've been doing at least one auction item every day on eBay. And I've just usually been starting those auction items at the price that eBay tells you to start it at. Like eBay's like, most things that are similar to this have started at an auction price of blank. And I'm like, okay, like you guys are the expert. I will believe you. And I just started at whatever price they tell me to. So I have like two bids right now on two different items, which is really cool. And this pair of L, is it Ellie? I think it's just L. But this pair of L purple heels, they're like velvety and they're like two-tone purple, but um, they're in a size six and a half. I hauled these in the Thread Up Rescue Box haul. I listed these as auctions starting at like, 
I don't know, like $2.99 or something like that. So pretty quickly, someone sent me a $5 offer and I countered with 10, which they accepted. And then that ended the auction and I sold these for $10. I believe that I said that I would pay for some of shipping on that. I said that the buyer needed to pay for $5 towards shipping. So after that, I am going to pay the $2.55 left because I'm able to actually fit these in a padded flat rate envelope. I'm assuming 20% of a cut from eBay, so I will have ended up making a profit of $5.45 on those heels. Okay, so for the week, let me break it down by platform. So on eBay, I made a whopping $12.29. <laughs> now that's not super accurate because like I said, I don't really understand how much eBay actually takes from you. I know they take a small portion and PayPal takes a small portion. I obviously know like how shipping worked out and how much to deduct from my profit from that. But I'm gonna say $12.29. Is that the actual amount that I earned on eBay? I think I probably actually made a little bit more, but let's just say $12.29. And that was on one, two, that was on two items or two transactions. So not like amazing, but I'll take it. I'm trying to build up my credibility on eBay. I literally have zero feedback right now. So hopefully I will get some positive feedback through these transactions and we'll go from there. On Mercari, I sold, it looks like five things and I made a total of $79.12 over there. A lot of that was due to that one coach purse. So I'm happy with what was going on on Mercari this week because it's a lot more than I have been doing, so I'll take it. And then finally, with my main bay over at Poshmark, I sold 17 items. One transaction was a bundle and so I made $294.85. A really interesting thing about this week is I did not sell a single thing using offers to likers this week and that's not for lack of trying I definitely sent out offers to likers most nights and if I didn't do it that night because I was like dead tired and I was passing out then I definitely sent them out like the next day but I didn't make a single sale through offers to likers I don't know if you guys have been experiencing something similar but yeah, like Office to Likers was just dead for me this week. I don't think we had a closet clear out this past week, which is a little bit shocking, but if they if we did, I didn't make a sale through that either. So just good old fashioned people sending me offers and things like that. So I'm okay with that. So my week was pretty interesting in that I sold 24 items, one of which was a bundle, but this is the first week since I've started making these videos that I sold more men's pieces than women's. So 11 of the pieces that I sold this week were men's items and 10 of them were women's and two of them were children's. Now, I don't think it's that surprising in the sense that the majority of what I listed this week were men's items because it got to the point in my students' pictures that she had sent me where she hit like all of my friend Steve's stuff. So I was listing like the majority of the stuff that he had given me. So I'm not surprised that I was able to sell through a lot of his items because that's what I was listing. And I was listing those items for pretty cheap. One, because I got them for free. And two, because they were brands like Old Navy or just like graphic tees like the Batman logo or, you know, things like that. So I'm not going to list those things for super high dollar. And it seems like people are out to get some pretty good deals right now. And I was definitely dishing them out. And I was doing a lot of that free shipping over on eBay and Mercari or discounted shipping. So I can see why I sold more men's pieces this week. But that's pretty unique and interesting for me. So I know I've said this before. If you're not selling men's items, if you're not dabbling in kids, or even in hard goods if you're selling on eBay, or even on Poshmark now, like they have that home goods market, give it a try, like you never know. And maybe just start with what you have at home, like maybe your spouse has some stuff that he or she is looking to get rid of, and maybe you've just not tried out that gender of clothing, but try it, like you never know, and you know, if you're gonna increase your sales, why not? So I think that's it. Oh, I didn't even tell you how much I made total. So my total amount that I made this week it was $386.26, which I'm really happy with because one, we're like in the middle of summer slowdown and two, that was with me having a really busy week and three, that's better than I've been doing the last few weeks. I've kind of been averaging around like $200, $250, somewhere around there. So $386, almost $400, 
really happy to have diversified into some different platforms. So yeah, so I'm really pleased with the results of this week. I hope you guys have been having amazing sales. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Adios. Bye. I'm going to put this picture of my brother here. He was not really on the cover of Men's Health. He just photoshopped his picture into this Men's Health cover. But I mean, this gives you an idea of how my brother could not possibly be a size 40, 40 pants.